The year is 1954. Ford replaces the Flathead V8, which goes clear back to 1932 and would be produced until 1953 with a 21-year run. Ford's all-new engine was called the Y-Block, and it gets its name from the deep skirting, which resembles the letter Y, hence the name. Ford would offer the Y-Block in one block size, five displacements 239 256 which was originally mercury's y block 272 292 and 312 it's important to note we are not going to cover the bigger lincoln y block in this episode also horsepower figures we're going to cover the low and high and i say that because ford offered a ton of different horsepower and torque figures for each year different carburetors different transmissions would affect different power outputs to just simplify things we are only going to go from the lowest figure to the highest figure this was ford's first overhead valve design making its debut in 1954 a whole year before chevy introduced their overhead valve design not counting the overhead valve design that they made from 1916 to 1918 Ford knew by the year 1948 that the flathead was more or less dead. Everybody else was going for overhead valves. And to stay competitive, they would have to go for overhead valve as well. To be fair, this engine was ready to go by 1953. But due to the nickel shortages brought on by the Korean War, Ford couldn't produce the quantity of engines needed. So they waited to release it in 1954. The Y block uses solid valve lifters that were mushroom shaped and had to be installed from the bottom. Hydraulic lifters were never offered. Shaft mounted rocker arms. The heads were interesting to say the least. The intake ports were vertical in pairs instead of horizontal and they have to make 90 degree turns inside the engine. The deep skirting which gives it the distinctive Y block shape makes this engine have a very durable bottom end, but it also adds a ton of weight. Introduced in 1954, 239 cubic inch displacement Y8, which was the same displacement as the outgoing flathead V8, but had a larger bore and shorter stroke and produced about 20 horsepower more than the outgoing flathead, 239 cubic inch displacement Y8, 3.9 liters. It's good for anywhere between 120 to 130 horsepower at 4,200 RPM, 195 to 214 pound-feet of 2,800 RPM, bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 3.1 inches, compression was 7.2 to 1, five main bearings built of cast iron. It was used for the years of 1954 through 1955. Also introduced in 1954 for Mercury Y block, which was advertised as the V161, 256 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve, Y8, 4.2 liters. It's good for 161 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 288 pound-feet of torque at 2,200 RPM. With a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.1 inches, compression was 7.5 to 1 five main bearings. This engine was only used in 1954 and it was replaced with the 292 Y block in 1955. It's important to note that this was one cubic inch bigger than the outgoing flathead V8 at 255 cubic inch displacement. 1955 was a big year with the release of not one Y block, but two Y blocks, the 272 and the 292, starting with the 272. And the reason Ford increased displacement was to one up Chevy, of course. 272 is bigger than 265. The 272 was the same bore as the 265 Mercury Y block, but it used a longer stroke was offered in different flavors and horsepower ratings over the years. This engine was produced from 1955 to 1957. 272 cubic inch displacement, Y8, 4.5 liters. It's good for anywhere between 162 horsepower up to 190 horsepower at 4,500 RPM. 258 to 270 Pound feet of torque at 2700 RPM with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. 
Compression was 7.6 to 1, 5 main bearings. Also introduced in 1955 was the 292Y8, 4.8 liters. It was good for anywhere between 170 horsepower, which it made that horsepower figure in 1962, but we'll come back to that in a minute, all the way up to 212 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, around 297 pound-feet of torque at 2,700 RPM, with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches. Compression could be anywhere between 6.4 to 1 all the way up to 9.1 to 1. The years this engine was used was between the years of 1955 to 1962 in cars. It went as long as 1964 in trucks in the United States. Side note, peak horsepower happened in 1957. After that, Ford detuned the Y block, which we will come back to. Moving on to the biggest and baddest Y block V8 that Ford offered, introduced in 1957, 312 cubic inch displacement Y8, 5.1 liters. It was good for anywhere between 245 horsepower all the way up to 285 horsepower at 4,500 RPM, around 336 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM, with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.4 inches. Compression was anywhere between 8.5 to 1 to 10 to 1. Years this engine was used, 1957 through 1960. After 57, it could be found in Mercury products. It's important to note that Ford offered a supercharged version of the 312 for 1957 model year, which boosted horsepower up to 340 horsepower at 5,300 RPM. 1957 was the last year Ford offered just the Y-Block V8 option as their sole V8. In 1958, Ford released the all-new FE engine family, or Ford Edsel. The Y-Block had some issues worth discussing. The block design couldn't get any bigger in displacement than 348 cubic inch displacement, while Chevy could go up to 400 cubic inch displacement. The Y block also had oiling problems. The system would feed oil to the rocker arm shaft through a small passage in the center cam bearing. These passages could become clogged with sludge. The Ford Y block would be replaced by not one engine family, but two engine families, the Ford FE or the Ford Edsel in 1958, which was technically a big block engine design and the Windsor small block, but that didn't come out until 1961. Ford weirdly decided to keep the Y block around until 1962 for cars, 1964 for trucks in the United States. And another weird choice was they detuned them. The 292 making 185 horsepower in 1960 in the Thunderbird versus 352 cubic inch displacement FE making 235 horsepower in base form. It's important to note the Y block was canceled in the United States in 1964, but it did go on in foreign markets, being produced in South America until 1980. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1955 Ford Thunderbird or a 1956 Ford Thunderbird or 1957 Ford Thunderbird? It's important to note the 57 can't be supercharged. I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for this second scenario. Would you rather have a 1955 Mercury Montclair or 1957 Ford Thunderbird non-supercharged or 1954 Ford Custom Line? I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. That song is an incredible, underrated song. I hope you guys get it. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below, or you could send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything. I totally dig the community that we have in the comment section, and I just wanted you guys to know that. Till next time, toodaloo!